Okay, as I was saying before, um, everything in calligraphy is measured. And the unity of measurement that we use is, it's called the nocta, which is a dot that you make with the same column that you will use to write the letter. Okay, so the dot, the very first thing that you have to think about is the angle of your column. You want to put your column in a 45 degrees angle, which is more or less this. And then you will pull down on this direction. This would be the nocta with a 45 degrees angle. Everyone knows what 45 degrees is. This is 90 and this is zero, okay? The nocta is always done in this direction, pulling down. And always trying to keep the same angle and also the same direction. So it's always a 45 degrees angle. And always the same direction. This is the angle of the nocta. And this is the direction. Always the same direction, always the same direction, always the same angle. As you can see, I hope you can appreciate it. The nocta is slightly longer than a square. It's just like a hair of your head, longer than a square. It's not a perfect square, okay? It has to be a little bit longer, slightly longer. So, this more or less would be a square, which is not considered to be an octa. Or you have to be careful with the direction and the angle because you can get a diamond, which is not considered to be an octa. As I said, it's a little bit longer than a square, but it's not that. This is a too long nocta. This is not considered to be an nocta or it's not too short, okay? So the nocta as a unity of measurement, it always has to has the same proportion. There is also a very specific proportion for the nocta. It has always to be the same, okay? If you wanna try at home, something that you can do is you can write, <clears throat> you can make a line in your paper. We always work based on one line. And this is also what a line of calligraphy, for example, hold on one second. This is a, this, this sentence here, for example, this is called the line of calligraphy. This is, this is why it's called the line of calligraphy because there is always a line which is named the cursi line. Cursi means the chair, is the chair where letters and words are sitting down. So each letter and each word has its own, its own specific um, place based on that line, okay? So also for the nocta, you can draw a line in your paper and you can start to make the nocta up here. And then you pull down in this direction and you will stop down here. So you start above the line and you finish the nocta below. You see what I mean? So you will have the line crossing the nota. The line is always very helpful. It has to be, again, slightly longer 
than a square. So there's a question, there's, they're asking, is this measurement applicable to all scripts? Um, the Nocta is, is used to measure um, letters in, in all the scripts, but the proportions are not the same in, in the different scripts, okay? Okay. So for example, the letter Ba in this script, in Thulu script has six noctas long. In Nessif script has four noctas long. So um, uh, proportion change depending the script that you're writing, but the unity of measure of measurement is always the nocta. And it's always done with the same pen that you're writing the letter. Okay? You don't change the, the, the pen between the letter and the noctas. Let me show you, for example, let's see, let's start with the alif, okay? How to write an alif. The nocta and the angle, as I said in calligraphy, it's all about angles, okay? So we have the 45 degrees angle for the nocta. It always has to be 45, 90, 45, and zero. But for the letters, we're gonna change the angle of the color, and we are going to use a more or less a 70 degrees angle, which would be this, okay? We need to bring the angle closer to 90 to make the letters, okay? The very first thing, uh, that we have in the alif is the head, what we call the head of the alif, which is this. As you can see, this is not an octa anymore. We have changed the angle and we have changed also the direction. Okay, this is the angle for the octa. This is the, the direction of the octa, and this is the angle or the head of the alif, and this is the direction. So you change both. Again. This is the head of the alif. And then you start with the body. You have to start right on this point you have to start a little bit lower than where you started the head. Still inside of the head, keeping the same 70 degrees angle, but you have to start slightly lower, okay? Um, from there, you will pull down, keeping the 70 degrees angle. You can always stop. If you run out of ink, you can always stop, take some more ink, and then continue. This would be the alley. Now, if we have a straight line here and a straight line here, you will see that Alif is not a, it's not a straight line. It, it, there is a space here and there is a space here because there is a curve that goes down on this direction and there is another curve that goes down in this direction. So more or less, in the middle of the letter, you change the direction of the stroke. It is like a very soft S motion. It's, it's, you see, Alif is not a straight line. There are not straight lines on this script. There is first a curve on this direction and then another one on this direction. Um, there is also there is also an inclination. Alif is not it's not totally straight. It's a little bit slender. There's a slant. It's not 
there is this inclination that's the inclination of the alif and in the Thuluth script in this script in script alif always have always has eight noctas so you start measuring from top to bottom three four five six seven and eight noctas this script alif always has eight noctas long from top to bottom this is how we measure the alif for example the bar let's make a bar Also, I have mentioned there are two different uh, directions in calligraphy. There are strokes and there are letters that we write pulling, and there are letters where we have to push. Okay, so Alif is pulling down. Now, to make the bow, we are going to push. Okay, we're going toward this direction. So, the very first thing that you have in the letter ba would be the head of the bar, which is this. So look how you start again with a 70 degrees angle. Look at the difference in the alif between the angle of the alif and the angle of the nocta. Okay, so we keep the same 70 degrees angle for the bar, and for this first part of the bar. We start in 70, but we will finish in 90. This is a 90 degrees angle, and this is a 70 degrees angle. So we have all this motion. We have to change the angle at the same time that we pull down this very first part of the bar. This is the motion from 70 to 90. Then to make the body of the bar, we will go back to 70 degrees, and then we will keep it all the way until the end. So from here, we start pushing. Again, you can always stop, take more ink and continue. And you will finish here. Now, how to measure the letter ba? As I said before, in this script, Ba has six noctas long. Three, four, five, and six. It has one nocta deep. It also has one nocta high from here. And the head, or this part of the alley until here, has one nocta and half. One and half. And then you will always have this space, which has to be also half nocta. Okay? Look how we start with 70 degrees. We keep it here. And we finished with the same angle. And we finished on this direction. Same angle that we started with. 
also uh, look how if we have a straight line from here to here, there is a little bit of a space here because this is not a straight line. Okay, and if we have another straight line from here to here, this space is bigger because this part, the end, the last part of the bar is more rounded. Actually, you want to have a circle here at the end of the bar. Also, look how if this is the middle of the letter, the lowest point is right here. It's not right in the middle, but a little bit farther. These are the measurements for letter ba, and the ba always has an octa. It's the same shape for ba, ta, or tha. Proportions doesn't change, um, but, 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 it, but it's the same shape for the three letters. Um, Aisa, do we have time? Do we have questions? Uh, yeah, let's, we could do some questions. Um, because yeah, we're kind of running out of time. It's 6.25. Uh, what time are we supposed to? 6.30 <laughs> in five uh -huh. minutes. But I mean, we can stay. If people have questions, we're happy. To yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I don't really see anything. How many people had the supplies? Who, who bought supplies? I'm just curious. Three, about three people, I think, or four. Mm -hmm. Let's let's explain another letter. So if they want to try, they can they can keep looking at it and, and trying by themselves. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Do we have time? Yeah. Why don't you do another letter and then we let's can... see? For example, letter G, right? Which would be the next letter. Um. Again, this, I'm going to repeat it again and again. The nocta and the angle of the nocta. 45 degrees angle for the nocta and 70 degrees angle for the letters. Okay, this is something that you have to keep always in mind, the angles, okay? So the letter G, first, Starting with 70, again, we don't change that angle. We will have this little thing. Also very important for all of you who are new beginners, who are starting to practice, or the first time that you practice calligraphy, look at the speed. It has to be very slow. You, you don't want to rush. You don't have to rush. The writing is very, very, very slow. Okay. Why? Because you have to be measuring with your eyes, right? You have to be looking at the space and, and you know, making sure that you, you don't make things longer or shorter. So going that slow helps you to figure out the proportions a little bit, okay? So you try not to rush. Um, go as slow as you can. Also, there is no pressure. I'm not pushing at all. It has to be very soft. It has to be like the column making a crease to the paper. It has to be very, very, very soft. You, you don't push. Don't, don't put any pressure on the paper and on the column, okay? Also, make sure that you have a soft, um, um, how, how can we call it? Leather or something, yeah. yeah. Leather plus something which is soft under your paper, okay, and that will help. Um, your column won't suffer, so you will keep it longer. So this is the very first thing that we have in, in the letter G, always starting from right to left. So we have this very first curve here and then 
um, this other one in this direction. It's just two, two different curves, okay? Always in this direction. Then from here, you wanna go up a little bit, just this little bit, okay? So you can see more or less that you go up to the middle of this shape, okay? It's just a little bit. Go up a little bit, and then you change the direction to here. Look how I started with a 70 degrees angle. I get the same angle here and the angle is still the same here, okay? In the letter G, you don't have to change the angle of your column at all. You have to keep it always 70 degrees. Now, I will start the body, which is a big curve that you start from here. Here, started with 70 degrees, keeping the same angle, it's very important. And I will complete the curve in here. To here. Now, when you reach this point, you, if you have a straight line here, this is where you have to stop. And then you will grow the tail. This is what we call the tail of the gym. You can draw it and then you can fill it, okay? Something very important in this letter is that the body, or this curve will never pass that line. So you will never have the body coming out of, the, of that line, okay? It has to be always inside. And how to measure the gene? You want to have now five noctas here. Have one, two, three, four, and five. There is half an octa here because you know this stroke you see goes down a little bit. It's not totally straight. You want to have one octa here. You want to have another octa here. This one has to be a little bit more. Tight. There is not that much space here as there is here. And then this curve has one octa, and this curve has one octa and half. And also the tail. Plus one of that and half. Look how I haven't changed the angle at all during the whole letter. Okay, also you can see at the negative space that you will have an egg. <laughs> yeah, this is very useful. 
always to study the negative spaces of the letter. If you have any reference, like for example here, it helps a lot to make to make the the shape. So as you can see, <clears throat> there are so many different things in just one letter. When it it's a combination of letters mm, creating a word, there are more and more um, proportions and measurements. But this is a little bit how it works. This is how we learn calligraphy. This is how we did. And um, this is basically all what you have to learn, all the proportions of each part of every letter. You have to, you know, make them part of you. It's not just learning, OK, Alif has eight, but six, G, five, that, that. No, no, no. You need to be able to make the letter and then put the noctas and, you know, get the, the proper um, proportions. I think that's a very good intro, uh, Khaled, I have to be honest. It pretty yeah. much, I mean, you covered many, many lessons. Of course, it, you make it much easier than it actually is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, you, when you put your kalam in the ink and then you try to, you know, bring bring out a steady nukta or a steady line, it's yeah. a lot more difficult when you're actually trying. Well, to yeah, but, you know, it's, it's just a matter of practice. And, yeah. um, that's it, takes time, it takes time, it takes, it takes a lot of time, I'm yeah. not going to lie, um, but it's fine, I mean, it doesn't mean anything, it just takes time and it, and it needs effort and dedication, uh, but that's it. Let, let me go back to my computer yeah. Yeah. and we can finish from there if you want. If we have more questions, I don't mind. Um, uh, basically, it's, you know, the questions I'm getting is who can you teach, you know, can you teach and um, if someone's in Canada, can, where would they find a teacher, this kind of thing. Well, um, the situation right now, we all know it's, a, it's, it's, it's different what we're living. Um, my main suggestion is always or always has been to go to Istanbul because this is what this is the suggestion I got from Nuria and this is what I made and it's the best you can you can do if you really want to learn calligraphy go to the source and learn from the masters you know and, and, and get an immersion of that world um, so if you if you can do that, that would be the ideal thing. Um, if you can travel, if you can move to Istanbul or you know just try to find you can try to find a master calligrapher close to you, which sometimes it's not easy, um, but it would be better than than nothing. Um, and right now, you know, in this in this pandemic times. Where everything is online, you could probably find something online or um, find someone who is willing to teach you online. I'm not a big fan of teaching online. And um, actually, um, this year I have stopped uh, taking new students. Um, you know, it's just because, in part, it's because of the situation. And people is constantly asking to. Uh, get online classes and online lessons, but this is not the way. Uh, and I'm sorry, um, I would like to teach everyone, um, but, but it, this is not the way. There are so many things. I, I mean, in this tradition, one of the most beautiful, one of the most important things and one of the most special things, things is the relation between the student and the teacher. Teaching online, that thing got missed and so you you don't want to miss that because it's something very powerful yeah. like it, it makes sense it makes a lot of sense to the whole thing and you know it's very 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 important the relation with your teacher and it's very important to be there 